In uh, preparation to the World Championships, we knew at uh, we knew or I knew, on Carl also that uh, Testov uh, will not be present, and uh, we hope that uh, maybe Kolovanov can be here because uh, Carl he told me for himself it's very important that uh, one of these uh, uh, one like uh, Kolovanov should be here as a competitor that he have something to to com compete with. So, science we knew that uh, Kolovanov uh, will not be here and compete, so we must find then uh, another goal in uh, general and um, also uh, maybe in the di different disciplines. Um, so, science Karl was uh, uh, injured with his uh, knee in the preparation the last weeks before the competition. I rewrote, rewrote, sorry the training schedule for the squad and uh, he have made then from uh, one week to the other week progress again but uh, he could not squatting these weights what was uh, foreseen in the original training schedule to these world championships but uh, science I saw that he have improved every week uh, then we have made uh, a status and test not a uh, heavy test, but only to see how it, his knee work for the preparation to the, to the worlds and also for the first attempt. You must know as a trainer where can we start it with the, the first attempt, only to know this is his, um, to get the insurance he, he can compete and the weights are uh, okay. This was one challenge and uh, I saw also that um, after the training programs what I um, have written to him, uh, in bench, especially in bench because he have had these problems uh, since last year uh, under the World Games with the chest. So I saw <coughs> the, the training was going very well in bench and I thought that in general his uh, improvement in strength is uh, higher as to the Europeans. So the goal was then not to have too much focus on the squat only that we can uh, have a good uh, squat uh, competition with, only, with not to uh, provoke his knee and uh, that we maybe force all the weights in the bench press and in deadlift. Um, the next challenge was also what I saw under this week uh, when you come to the heavier body weight classes that the bar get weaker and weaker and this was also then a challenge for me to know how much can I uh, increase the weights from the first to the last attempt uh, concerning his knee. This is what this, what I thought. But how is it possible to squat so many kilograms with the knee problems? Because it's uh, hard to understand if uh, it is really a hard uh, injury. Four, nine. <clears throat> yes, but then, uh, <clears throat> then you can maybe imagine how much he could maybe squat if, if he didn't have had this injury in, in the preparation to the, to the Worlds. Uh, because a lot of people maybe expected that he can squat in 500. This is not, 500 is not now a number who I would, what I will push uh, on the side and say it's not possible. It's only maybe to use a little bit um, <clears throat> the brain to, uh, to understand it's maybe better to take a safe competition in squat that he can continue after the world championships again to train for the next competition to the Europeans in May. So it's quite a smart decision for you and for Carl. And do you remember what did Carl say to you after the first attempt in squat when he got back from the platform? He said not so much. What he say, uh, what, what happens in the warm-up? Uh, we have made uh, the last attempt with 455 and then he told me, Dietmar, it was heavy. He told me it is heavy, it is his, his subject, uh, his personal opinion about, about the weight. But uh, what um, a lifter feel and what we see from the outside as a coach are two different things. So... <clears throat> um, and you compare? I compare. So what I see 
connected to the technique on which way he, have, he falls, uh, the bar, so I can make the decisions uh, about the weights. But uh, we make a safe opener, and uh, I told him then, he say nothing. I only ask, how was it? It was okay. Then I, following my plan, what I have had in my head, to get the, the total, or maybe also to get this uh, overall, the wilk points so of, of, of Fedosenko. You were thinking about it before? Yes, it was on my plan, because Kolovanov was not here. And uh, 500 was not able to do today. Then we must have other goal. The other goal was then maybe to try to beat uh, Fedosenko's total in, in the wilk points. Yeah, he's a very, good, a very, very good competitor in his body weight category, or the lower body weight category. It, um, it was not so quite often that maybe a super heavyweight lifter have a chance to beat uh, a, a lifter in a lighter body weight class. This was not able. But now we see, I think there was big changes the last years. If you go back in the result list, maybe for 10, 12 years ago, the, the result list and also the participations in, in participants in the heavy body weight categories was very low. But now you see there was a very big improvement of the numbers of uh, participations in the body weight heavy categories and you see now that they are also able to have lifting heavy weights. It has to something to do that maybe power lift have to start to be more structured. That are the training systems, the people care about much more about uh, training and you see what the result is now to today. What the biggest difference in uh, between your training system and training system, for example, in the USA or in Europe? Um, <clears throat> uh, as I know, as you know, maybe or the other people know, I, I'm coming from weightlifting. Weightlifting have a very high frequency of training sessions. Maybe twice a day or sometimes they have three, day, uh, three uh, sessions per day. So my question was then, we cannot speak about top uh, sport if you train only two or three times a week and maybe one exercises. This cannot be a top sport. A top sport, if we get, will get um, um, success, the people uh, get respect uh, regarding to our sport, then we must show that we are able to train on a high level. So, then, uh, uh, was the question, how can you then um, plan, for example, a whole training week with different training sessions, where you have, for example, four or five or six times squat in a week, five or six times or maybe seven times bench, and five or six times or the four or six times deadlift. This was, this was my challenge to find out where, how often, how heavy, and how many, uh, how much you can train. This is what we, we started with. But this, this, this experience, what I have, uh, and this knowledge, it's not built only of a couple of years. Your students uh, can squat and deadlift uh, at the same day? Yes. Uh, and bench. And bench. So, isn't it a little bit risky to squat and deadlift? Because when you squat in your back muscles working pretty high. Then this is the challenge for the trainer to find out where should the intensity be for squat and deadlift and bench press to recover for the next training day for example. Uh, you know you must know there are not they did not train six times a week the same squat uh, exercise. There are different squat exercises you know. It's interesting. Yes. Uh, about squat, uh, how many uh, variations you implement in squat training sessions? It can be in one week. It can be four or five different uh, squat. Uh, for example. For example. Uh, for example. Uh, no, you have powerlifting squat. You have uh, weightlifting squat. You have front squat. You can have a squat uh, on box. You can have squat with stop. Uh, there are a lot of uh, different things. Uh, as I say, there are a lot of possibilities. It's only to know where should the in intensity be for this. And this is also um, individual. It's a, you have a special car, for example, or the heavyweight lifters. They have other training programs related to the intensity as lighter, uh, lighter body weight lifters. They recover much, uh, much uh, faster, you know. What about chains and bands? Do you like it? Yeah, we have we have it also uh, sometimes in the trainings programs. 
what uh, what do chains and bands improve? No, it's uh, <clears throat> the, the, especially the rubber bands. They improve that you can um, train with heavier weights. They support the lifts in the, in the sitting position, and uh, you are able to lifting heavier weights. So you can walk out with heavier weights too. That you have a better, much better feeling for heavier weights on your back when you t take this connected to uh, equipment training. The chains also they uh, <clears throat> disagree the. the the intensity in in the sitting position and uh, increase again on the top. Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, uh, as everyone could notice, uh, bench press of Carl uh, has improved. Yes, has been improved. And uh, you said it it was plus twelve point five kilograms. Yes. Uh, what is your opinion? What uh, uh, was the main reason? to be successful in bench press in this training preparation. What you, what did you implement in your bench press? What did you change? No, I changed, uh, first of all, uh, uh, the basic thing was that uh, the, 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 the pain in the chest muscle was lesser and lesser. So he could more following the, the bench press program or I've had the original bench press program or I've had, had for him. The second thing was that I have also changed a little bit the intensity uh, how often he should train heavier and how often he should train uh, a lower intensity. Uh, this was maybe the reason. I, I cannot now say when, I, then I must see the, the, the whole training schedule to give you a, a correct answer, but I think this was the reason. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Carl had uh, quite <coughs> serious problems problems with the uh, lockout and deadlift. Yes. How did you hit it? Beat it? The no, the, <laughs> the the lockout was <coughs> the lockout was not a question of strange. The lockout was a question about his legs. Too long. Too large. Uh -huh. and long. You know, uh, um, you <coughs> must you must know in in the beginning when he started uh, in his junior. Uh, period. He have in this period he have had the knee problems when he coming from snowboarding, and uh, the challenge was to find out what can we do to avoid more problems with the knees, knees knee problems. Then the second uh, challenge was how often he can train, on which way, how high the intensity should be. In a junior uh, time, <coughs> he trained lesser squat because of the knee problems, and then it, this means also that. Uh, the, the legs was not so big as we maybe expected because if he can train more squat then uh, he can extend also the volume. So when he started then to train a, 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 or can train more squat then he extended the legs and then we started with the problems in deadlift because before he was a very good the deadlift was very good, but then when I saw that the legs extended, then we get this problem with the lockout because the bar hook in the, in the legs and he cannot stay. So then I must found a new lifting technique for him, and we work on it, and it uh, works very well. Now. Have you ever tried some more? No. Right. But he trained sometimes. He have trained sometimes half sumo. It's a training methodic. In the normal, in the normal uh, uh, deadlift training, we switch often a little bit, but uh, it looks like that uh, this program, what I have now for him in deadlift, it works very well. Uh, compared to another your student students, uh, what can we say about Carl uh, in terms of his behavior? Is he is he a good patient? <coughs> uh, is he smart? Is he uh, polite? He's very polite and uh, he's also a student, um, he wished to learn more, that he get much more knowledge about training because uh, I work on that the lifter must understand why he must train, for example, this exercise or these exercises. It's um, a more a two-way communication. So it's not only that I give him the order to do something, he must un also understand why he must do it. I explain him why. So this is much easier <coughs> for me also on the trainer, as a trainer, uh, that he know about his workloads. So that he get more um, 
self-going self-going person that he growing with the with the workloads but he is uh, <coughs> he gives me always the feedback if things work works or not work and it's very important to get it if not you know you can maybe <coughs> have a competition and the results you will not achieve the results it can be a lot of things it can be family life it can be the school it can be for example nutrition it can be something else or it can be the training it's not always the training schedule who get this negative impact for uh, for negative results on a competition uh, i took an uh, interview with carl two times and i remember very well one interesting moment when i asked him about uh, uh, popularity and he said i no 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 it's not about me uh, i don't know uh, publicity i do it for only for myself i think uh, he 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 liked powerlifting very much he loved powerlifting and he do it for himself but he's also a very good ambassador for for powerlifting but he's not the person who are working that he get much much more attention in 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 public you know i think uh, if you achieve good results the attention the public will following automatically so now the challenge is now that he must learn on which way he he learned to handle this uh, publicity in 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 public so you said about uh, automatically and uh, he has nothing to do it uh, happens uh, by itself yeah yes i think uh, yes uh, if you do you do workloads if you have good competitions if you achieve results the people get attention on you and then this is the other challenge They're like he's now a person they know him worldwide so must he he must now also learn to uh, handle this that a lot of people know him this is not only this is now that the, the back side of the medal you know 500 kilograms was uh, not today but uh, everyone uh, saw that, that that it is not true 500 and more yes you know but uh, as i told you i will not take the risk that he get injured so um, as i told you now in the beginning that we have had a lot of problems with him with the knees the last years now we are on the right way i think to get him on the right track with the with the the, the, the training so i it was not necessary to do this 500 today we have next year also competitions so it i i will not take it where carl will uh, take part next time uh the next time the next competition will be the europeans in may 2000 no, no national not, not nationals no they are after uh, after we have always the national after europeans because the main goal for the team is the europeans because we make always the qualifications one one year in ahead to the bigger competitions uh, for the next year so the team <coughs> who competing here the most of them will also compete next year at the world's 2015 so he takes <coughs> part uh, three times a week very easily please he takes part in three uh, competitions yes in a year yes uh, with easy yes uh, you know uh, we have the nationals two or three weeks after europeans oh, so uh, he he compete there because the people like to see him on the nationals too because he is an icon in europe uh, in europe and also especially in, in Norway uh, and we do this right after the Europeans he have a, he train a lighter training schedule to the to the national championships then we have a regeneration program after the nationals and then he started then again with the preparation to the worlds uh, how much is the next uh, competition's goal Yes, I, I'm, I'm not a person who say, uh, speak about numbers. I say something like, if you see on, on which way he approved from the Europeans to the Worlds, so I think you can expect more at the Europeans too. It will too. be very hard to beat, to beat himself. Yes, then uh, we, must found, uh, we must found a goal. I'm, th I'm sure if we will find a goat that he will achieve more more kilos in the total and maybe also in the in the disciplines. Uh, one question about uh, team of Norway. What happened with Norway in general? No, um, <clears throat> I think um, you know when I started uh, when I started in the Norwegian Powerlifting Federation, I saw 
it is necessary to structure it, the Federation concerning the training. So I have had, I must say it, that, that I'm, I'm also a little bit lucky, I have had the right persons around me who support me to say, okay, we try to, to do this this way. We structure it, the training, we try, we structure it, the trainer education. Uh, I have uh, <coughs> written, um, what do you, don't know what you call it, uh, manuals for the trainer education for the Norwegian powerlifter trainers. These manuals are recognized from the National Sport Federation uh, as an official, official uh, education plan. And uh, then uh, we started to educate trainers for the clubs, for the clubs, for the regions. This is uh, one. And then uh, we structured also the training for the team, uh, for the individual training schedule for the team. And uh, this works very well. It was. A lot of people ask me how long I used time for this structuring. I think it was more as 10 or 12 years. <coughs> Not very uh, <coughs> positive question, but I have to ask it uh, about Shell Egil Bakadun. Yes. Because everyone uh, wants to know what happened to him. And uh, you should know that this guy also will be watching this interview. Yes, I know. Uh, you know, <coughs> as I told you now, we have we have structured the federation, we have structured the training, we have structured the team. That the team work very well, you, ne you need rules. So this is a personal case connected to the team and this is the reason why it's not here. So no more details? Uh, no, uh, if you need details then you can call him. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we have, uh, so we expected everybody in the team following the rules. About training system, uh, uh, can you say that uh, you are thirsty for knowledge and you yes. are reading every time, everywhere and trying to find out something new? I'm very lucky that I have these uh, lifters in the team who are willing to follow this, uh, this uh, new training system. I make notices, I see on which way they uh, developed. I have had in the past a lot of lifters who are following this uh, different, I have often used different systems to see, to compare it, what, what works connected to, to each other. Um, we have a couple of uh, good uh, trainers in, in, in powerlifting. Um, what, what is a little bit a disadvantage? It's, uh, we have not so much uh, powerlifter trainers who are directly connected or coming from powerlifting. It's like me, lifters who are coming from other sports like weightlifting. We try to make uh, a transition from a weightlifting training over to powerlifting training, but it's not so easy because first of all, in powerlifting we have three exercises. The intensity is much higher. You must know about uh, regen uh, regeneration and so on, how often you can train. I think we have maybe, I don't know, maybe I say a number, eight to ten. High educated or uh, 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 trainers have uh, a lot of knowledge about powerlifting training in the world on, the, on, this, on this level. Whom do you recognize, Who, whose training system do you recognize and uh, you respect? Uh, from uh, current coaches and former coaches? No, uh, the first of all, you know, I, uh, I always was, when I also was a weightlifter, I was always interested in, I have a lot of Russian books about weight, weightlifting. I read a lot of... In details, please. <laughs> no, I don't know, I don't know all, all the names, but uh, it was Russian weightlifting books. But I've had also from the 70s already. They was written in Russia. They was in this time. It was not allowed to get these Russian weightlifting books. I get it through, uh, you know. And um, but uh, then I know about Boris Shaiko. This was one of this person what I read uh, read most of. Then uh, we have also had uh, one guy, one uh, trainer who was uh, the trainer of uh, Hannibal Coimbra, Ale Hamang. I work with him a little bit. We have had a cooperation from, from Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Then uh, I must also say uh, there is uh, something going on in uh, Ecuador. I saw it. It's a very good, a very good team. 
I think they have also knowledge about uh, powerlifting training, but there are a couple of trainers also in, in Russia. I don't know all the, the names, but I know they have uh, a lot of experience about uh, training, powerlifting training, and Ukraine, yeah, of course. Everybody. Yes. And the very last question, um, but I'm very interested in it. <clears throat> can you say, can you tell me why uh, Ukrainian and the Russian lifters are so uh, strong and why they uh, win almost every year first places. What is the secret of them? I don't know uh, if you can call it secret. Uh, you know, you see, first of all, Russia have a, a, a higher number of competitors on national level. Uh, Ukrainians also. So they have much bigger resources connected to, to lifter on a higher level. This was the challenge what we have had in Norway. We have only a, a lower number of uh, lifters in the Federation, but we must care about them to get them on a higher level and we must care about them over long term, that they compete over a couple of uh, many years or a couple of years. We have much more possibilities maybe also to, to get more publicity, you know, it, it helps you. And I think also that uh, the trainers have, have uh, enough knowledge to get the people up in, in, in this position, you know. And maybe some uh, differ, difference in the mentality. Of yes, uh, you, you know, you know, uh, you see in Western Europe, the people are they living in other system. They have and all th all things around them. Uh, in uh, Eastern Europe, maybe this is a possibility to to come more in a higher status. To also maybe uh, I don't know. I cannot. This only. I will not say it. Maybe a speculation that they can uh, earn more money. Uh, this is maybe uh, that they see a chance to come higher in the in the um, system, and uh, not system in 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 the, in the society. Yes. Okay, I think that's all. Thank yep. You very much.